And as we are on the topic of fighting with hardware, let's talk about registers. Now, to say the access to the VDP registers is weird would be an understatement. If we look at this chart in the V938 Programmer's Guide and notice the register numbering, and you will find what I describe as a post-apocalyptic battlefield. It's like some cyber warlords have fought over the control over this address space. The registers are spread everywhere, and other than register 4 and 6, which share the same bit pattern, the address bits in those registers are all over the place too. And this is the same for color registers and mode registers. The exceptions are access registers and command registers. Those registers are basically together. But wait, what is a control register pointer? Well, it's basically a register containing a pointer to a register, making it a meta register. But it's not the only meta registers on the V9958. There's one for status registers, and there's one for color palettes. Both of them are registers containing a pointer to other registers. So, what's going on here? Why are there so many meta registers? Well, it has something to do with how registers are accessed on the MSX. You see, on the Zilog Z80, the I.O. ports are kind of an unrenewable and scarce resource. Engineers at Yamaha decide that only four ports would be used to access the entire VDB register bank. So, instead of doing a load A with data and output it to the corresponding register, as you may think, you need to do a load A with a register number and then write the data. But this is still incorrect, because in order to save the ports, the register slack and data ports are actually the same. Port 99. Now, is this correct? No, because on the MSX, you need to first write the data and then select the register you want to write to. Now, this just goes against all the conventions I've seen on all other systems. But this is still not the end of it. Because in this because during this process, an interrupt may happen and mess up your register selection. So you need to do a disable interrupt, then output the data, and then enable the interrupt at the end. Incidentally, this is also how binding and unbinding works on OpenGL. And it's one of the most criticized aspects of it. All the above is a part of the design of the original TMS9918 chip, designed by engineers at Texas Instruments. Now, engineers at Yamaha came in, saw this mess, and decided to fix it. How did they fix it, you may ask? Well, they added the write port and the register. And that register auto increments after each write to the port, so that you don't have to do this each time you write to a register. And they basically did the same for the color palette with the register that also auto increments. But remember that post apocalyptic battlefield that we just mentioned before? Well, good luck updating the color table pointer using the auto increment because you need to save the register values for register number 4 through 9. And then you need to load them back before you get to register 10. And you end up doing 8 writes to do what could be achieved with just 4. And did I mention that register 17 won't kind of set itself? Therefore, you have to use the old method to set up register 17 in the first place. In the end, register 17 is good for one purpose and one purpose only. Set up the entire register bank using a single OTIR instruction. But it's an operation that's usually done once in each program during the initial setup. Well, maybe a few times. But still, the speed up is insignificant. The good news is the palette selection does auto increment and you kind of need to rapidly change that in mid frame. However, Yamaha being Yamaha, they decide to reuse a lot of latches to create a lot of arbitrary conflicts between register accesses and palette accesses and create a lot of confusion for programmers and the palette themselves. Just look at them. Do you see anything wrong? If you have programmed for the Atari STE before, there's a decent chance that you are already doing facepalm at this point. But for the rest of you who didn't, let me explain. 
The RGB values in a palette register are not integers, but they are fixed point decimal numbers. I guess they are binary, so they should be called bicimals? They present a value from 0, which means all black, to 1, which means full brightness for the corresponding color. Therefore, instead of extending upwards like integers, they extend downwards. As a result, the bits should occupy the high part of the code space they are assigned to, thus allowing easy expansion without breaking compatibility or making the bit pattern very awkward. But in the end, despite having a 5-bit internal DAC, the pattern on the V9958 was never expanded. I just hope they learn from their mistake when designing an entirely new chip. And finally, there's a bonus one. I know everyone likes to talk about the scroll register on the V9958 and how this disproves the stereotype that people had about MSX having bad scrolling despite only a handful of games ever used it. But I think those people haven't actually read the documentation for V9958 because Yamaha added two scrolling registers instead of one. Actually, they added three, but only two are used for scrolling. However, again, Yamaha being Yamaha, the two registers scroll in opposite directions. Talk about unnecessary confusion for the programmers, huh? But that's enough of me talking here. What are your thoughts? Do you like the V9958? Do you hate it? Do you feel frustrated when programming for it? Do you like the V9990? You can leave your thoughts in the comment section below or send me a Patreon message. And finally, another thing that I found out after making the last video is that YouTube is really, really bad at recommending my videos. My videos got put under completely irrelevant topics usually general science or hacking. So if you don't want to miss out on more contents like this, please subscribe to my channel. But that's it for this video, and I will see you in the next one.